Welcome back to the Raven Magic Podcast. This podcast is a safe, sacred container dedicated to helping you explore the shadow safely. Hey guys, it's Raven and I'm back for another video on shadow integration. So I wanted to do a beginner Kind of my five basic tips for those of you that have never done shadow work and want to start right now in the collective shadow work is on the rise it's a buzz term i've watched countless videos on shadow integration and i'm not a depth psychologist or a medical professional as my disclaimer states but i do have some certifications in shadow work including one from a, like a Jungian view of shadow integration as well and so these are just my personal opinions and methods and they might not work for everybody but with all these videos that i'm watching and i'm seeing and i'm seeing all these comments repeatedly i just watched a million videos on shadow work and what the shadow is and i still have no idea why i want to do it or what is doing it and this and that so i thought all right i'm going to do my best to articulate my five tips for newbies that want to do shadow work <sighs> Let's start with a brief definition on shadow work. So shadow work can be loosely defined as a healing modality. If that is what it is, shadow work was designed as a healing modality, much like other healing modalities in order to help us reach a state of harmonious wholeness. The shadow in a nutshell can be defined as any unconscious aspect of ourselves. So shadow work is defined as taking the intentional time to make the unconscious repressed denied aspects of ourselves conscious. Shadow integration, in my opinion, is when we are then taking the time and the steps to bring the conscious awareness that we now have of those parts into an adaptive, as opposed to maladaptive, harmonious wholeness, okay? So the shadow is not going to be easy to define if you're brand new to it. And I'll tell you why it is because it was coined by Carl Jung, who was a Swiss psychiatrist. He has his own psychological model of the psyche that includes both a personal unconscious or personal shadow and a collective unconscious, which interacts within our personal shadow. This to this day. So Carl Jung, he literally coined a lot of these things like in the 30s and he died in 1961. So I'm not trying to make light of this and I am going to do another video on why I think Carl Jung and his psychological model has risen through like the mainstream. So stay tuned for that. You might want to subscribe if that interests you. But I do kind of want to highlight that this this man died in the 60s and to this day, Jungian psychology in the psychology side is actually still considered more of a pseudo psychology. Okay. So I think that's important for us to like understand when we're at like shadow work and it's buzz is on the rise. So another way that shadow work existed, even predating Carl Jung was through many shamanic and traditional practices, which we call shamanism, but shamanism is more of an umbrella term and an arc. So we could call it more of that as like falling under that heading or grouping, but those are going to be unique medicines to the people and the practices and the cultures of which they originate. And then in our occult practice and witchcraft, shadow integration would be happening. So why is that? That is because our unconscious denied repressed aspects of ourselves, AKA what we deem shadow always loops in our reality and our waking life in order to get integrated. So the process of shadow work is actually helping that along. It's paying attention and we can kind of do it without having to dig into ourselves. So a lot of videos on shadow work are going to tell you their number one step is that you're going to have to go and face the unconscious. My number one step is to stop. If you are brand new to shadow work, you need to pump the brakes. You need to stop. You need to tap yourself on the shoulder and ask yourself this question. Number one, do I have a stable sense of self? Because the first step in order to do shadow work is to have and be in a stable sense of self. 
This is how our ego, our conscious identified personality functions. We have to have a properly functioning ego and a general understanding of the persona, which is the mask that shifts depending on who we are, you know, presenting ourselves, us as in the world. We have to have that stable first. Why? Because the shadow then like needs a stable pillar of some kind of I, of some kind of self in order for us to have uh, you know, a sense of self-love, a, a, a compassion. You can watch my other video for the three basics of shadow integration. We need to have that in order to start unpacking our repressed denied aspects, many of which are going to be linked to traumas. So my first tip is to get a stable sense of self, a stable sense of being. So if you don't have that, I highly don't recommend doing shadow work. Now, as a side kind of note, just something to be aware of in today's society where there's a lot of unconscious material rising in consciousness, which I'll do another video on. You could be in the shadow is what I call it. So this is kind of a sidestep. If you've come to this video because you feel like you're drowning, proverbially drowning in unconscious content, maybe, you know, you did a medicine journey, you had a psychedelic vision, a spiritual healer blew your Kundalini open. Now you're kind of messed up and you, and you're overwhelmed in unconscious material. That's when you need to get a guide that will help you do that. I'm definitely one that could support that, but there are others too. And always vet your guides and I'll link the video of how to properly vet your guides in whatever corner it goes to. I always forget. But anyway, so step number one is to gain some kind of stability in yourself. So if you're younger, that actually might be like where I would caution and Carl Jung would caution too. If you're on the younger side, it doesn't mean you can't do shadow work but your focus should be more on discovering who you are. And if trauma surfaces in your reality, which is my number two step, my number two step is pay attention to the shadow that is naturally surfacing. So we don't have to dive and dig and trigger ourselves because the truth is, is that the shadow that gets rejected back there is whatever age it was psychologically and emotionally and mentally when it got rejected. The ego develops in tandem, and that's why we can have a real strong view with some other part of us that wants to go a different way. And a lot of people articulate the shadow like it's some like dark entity, villainous side. That's not true. It's more like fragmented little pieces, little parts, all with their own agendas, desires, and like things. So this is why it gets hard to articulate to a beginner. So number one, you're going to have a stable sense of self. Number two, you are going to pay attention to how the shadow is naturally manifesting in your reality and you're going to get curious about it. So what do I mean by that? The shadow always wants to become conscious and merge with our conscious personality. It, it literally does. So it's going to project onto our waking reality. So we're going to see this in our reactionary, emotional triggered states. We're going to see this looping in our interpersonal relationships connections. We're going to see this in our fantasies and dreams and daydreams. It's way deeper than that, but that's something you can start paying attention to. So a lot of people like have prompts and journal, like make your own prompts based on what's happening in your life. And you'll get a hell of a lot further because it'll be unique to you. Everybody's unconscious contents are unique. The way in which they're the same is when the collective layer comes in, when worldview layers comes in when our archetypal patterning layer comes in and that's an entirely different video because then we're getting into two like contrasexual relating archetypal functions. So I'll go into that separately because like we really just need to understand how the shadow is kind of manifesting. Number three, you can play in the persona. So what I mean by that is, the ego is in the center, right? This is kind of like what's holding us together. The ego is the self. This is me. Here I am. And then I have all this unconscious content right now that could be like not even wanting to do this video. It could be hijacking it. It could be like, you're being dumb. Like who knows what's going on in Raven's unconscious right now. Then I have this mask where I'm presenting to you. I'm like, okay, I'm Raven. Here I am being the shadow expert. I'm coming on to the camera and I'm going to teach you something. Right? So I can play in that persona. You can play in the mask. A great place to find out 
what your mask is, is your social media account. So if you're more of like somebody that stays off of social media, then you might want to ask yourself how you're presenting to your friends, how you present at work, because the persona is going to be opposing to whatever is in the unconscious. Cause the persona is kind of like our idealized like character, right? We can look at it that way. And so we don't have to judge it. We just have to understand that we're in it. And the coolest part about the persona is that it can shift and change. You're not bound to it by any means. There's a lot of our society that believes they are the mask that they wear, right? No, this is me. I'm a shadow worker. I'm this, but that's not true. I'm choosing to walk the path of the shadow. I'm very conscious of my words because of that. It's like, okay, well, am I an expert? Am I a shadow specialist? Probably not. Why? Because I'm just choosing to be in the shadow and illuminate it for you because we all have one. And I think the more that we get used to that, and there's no end goal, you know, in the spiritual society, we can get really hooked into wanting to hit that done button into wanting to dig and uncover everything that is quite maladaptive. So just have fun in it, you know, kind of question your persona and like what might be hiding in this un like this part that isn't you. Okay. So we're going to have a stable sense of self with grounding, go to the trees, get your self love on, do some mirror work, you know, get a therapist, get a guide, get some deep, deep sense of self. Number two, you're going to pay attention to your waking reality. You know, what gets you so mad? What kind of people repulse you and simultaneously magnet you into them? Right? These are, these are kind of hints and clues of what could be back there. And number three, we're going to play in our persona. We're going to kind of have fun in the character mask. So a lot of times on like Reddit boards or whatever, I'll see like people have a great idea of like a, it's called dissonance. It's when there's like an opposing split. So there's a part of you that wants to go one way and a part of you that like has the exact opposite manifestation. And it's really hard to get those to balance. So they might be like, oh, here's my devil and the angel, right? That's like a, a classic example. Like you got the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other. So that might even be something if you're somebody that's trying to like break out of a religious like upbringing or something like that, you might want to kind of craft a persona of like where you're like, okay, this isn't fully me. But maybe I want to make like my inner devil, you know, and have fun in it. As long as it feels safe in the body, it's not causing any re-traumatization. And I'll go into that video on like embodied journey. I'm just starting my channel. So I definitely have a lot of wisdom and knowledge in me. I'm also going to start doing live streams of ask for even anything. So you can definitely put your comments below and I'll try to answer them if you have any. But crafting these characters helps us somatically integrate the shadow which helps us develop. I was going to say step number four is like developing that ego. Like a lot of times we look at the ego as like this bad, awful thing. And then you have spiritual society that's like, be your own brand. I got news for you, spiritual society. That is your ego. You're not defeating the ego. The ego is needed. An ego and a healthy mask is, is vital for functioning in the human world. Now, a lot of you that don't identify as humans and like your star seeds and whatever, I understand that, but you like grounding on earth is going to be a step of shadow integration for you. Okay. Because the truth is, is that whatever we are, we're inhabiting a human experience and that's where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be grounding these gifts down. That's just like a little side tangent for those of you. Cause I know there's a lot that identify as star seeds and other things like that. So that's a little side extra step for you, you know, go back to step one and make sure you're stable and rooted in that sense of self. Okay. So when we're developing our ego and we're developing the sense of self through these processes, that's actually going to help us with the shadow. Why? Because the ego, like when we start getting a better sense of like what feels good in our body and like who we want to consciously identify with and then where the resistance is, that kind of fleshes out the shadow a bit more and that helps us integrate. So another step, I don't remember what step we're on, but I was going to kind of go back to the, per, like where the shadow resides, which is like our projections, our fantasies, like our real strong viewpoints and things like that and traumas. So, you know, if we're looking at our dreams, that's a great way 
to flesh out the shadow. You can start documenting your dreams. The dream process is essentially where our body goes to regulate what happened in our lives. And sometimes it's coming from like otherworldly things and things like that. So for there's like an extra step for those of you that are doing a shadow work path and you have and you want to add my otherworldly layer of having your spirit animals, your guides, like all these things there. Those you can also look at as potential projections of self. And you can also call them in to help with shadow integration. So there's kind of like a twofold there and that's definitely or a deeper dive <laughs> and guide. I was going to say number five is get a therapist or a guide. Shadow work is a psychological method of integration. So psychotherapists that are trained in like, you know, a Jungian analyst or psychotherapists that are trained with awareness of IFS, like parts work or shadow work or guides that actually know what they're doing and can speak to their own shadow integration. These are people that might be able to hold space for you if you have a part that feels like it's too much. So how do we know when we need a guide for shadow integration? We know when we are quasi aware of a shadow that we want to integrate, but we're in the avoidance state or we're in a fear state or we're drowning in the unconscious, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Those are kind of three areas where we might want to get a guide. Why? Because an external is always going to be able to hold space for the shadow because the shadow is blind. This is why it can cause trauma when we do shadow work, if we go too deep too fast. Because essentially what's happening is once that part or fragment or belief or whatever it is enters into the conscious realm, it's almost like blinders lift off and then you are seeing things differently. I'm sure people can relate to this. I bet you a lot of you are like, oh my God, I was already doing shadow integration. And you are because it's happening whether you're aware of it or not. It happens organically. It's just that many of us resist it and we fix on to like the mask or the ego or who I am and I'm not this and I refuse to be that and that's shameful and that's guilt and that's this. So I can add that in as another step. You might want to look at like feelings, feelings of inadequacy, self-sabotage, feelings of shame and guilt. Those are usually shadows. And you can do like active imagination or inner dialogue. These are like easy methods that can stir up the shadow. Anyway, I hope this video served you. I hope it definitely helped at least give you like a basic kind of way to start exploring the shadow. And then as I go deeper into these videos, I think I'm just gonna keep pumping them out in different topics. So I appreciate everybody like sticking around. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, you can leave them below. And yeah, to go off of why I think like, like there's shitty videos on the shadow, including maybe even my own is because it's so, in my opinion, if you're going to intellectualize it and box it in like the exact like here's the shadow and here's this and here's this and here's that you can be led astray because you you have this organic um, like like the intuitive wisdom kind of coming through of my own embodiment of my own like shadow integration and possession and psychosis and everything. This all gave me like my Chiron wounded healer medicine. Okay. Um, but the intuitive thing and the felt sense is coming through is that everyone has specific ways that work for them to achieve this kind of integrative process. And so what works for one person isn't going to necessarily work for the next. And because shadow work isn't governed by any body right now, there's no regulation on it. So anybody can speak to the shadow and shadow work and anybody can do shadow work, which is kind of a danger to it as well, because then we get a lot of well-meaning individuals that are not equipped to integrate the shadow. And if you're looking to work one-on-one -on -one with me and, you know, I will admit, I will like admit this. I have done a lot of work. I have a tremendous, extensive background in a wide variety of modalities under my belt. I have spun wisdom from embodied experience that gave me such a depth and wealth of knowledge. 
but I know my edges in shadow integration and I am not comfortable taking people into some of these really blind aspects of themselves because you know, even when we have a good idea of what's coming up, if there's blind memories or, you know, things like that, it can have catastrophic events. And so I work with things that are on the surface with others. I work with helping reflect your words back at you. I, I, I help set people up for success to learn what I teach, which is the ritual art form of shadow integration, which will be unique to you. So I guess I just kind of want to disclose that at the end of this video, like that, you know, if a guide doesn't have certification or a mental health certificate and things like that, I would ask about that and ask if they have a boundary of ethics because yeah, like in those cases, like sometimes I refer people to other clinical practitioners. And the reason I don't want a psychology degree is because I'm not here to do that. I'm here to, I'm here to bridge the thread. I'm here to bridge the thread because I see this huge gap in our collective. I see this gap. It's a huge gap between spiritual well-meaning healer gurus and psychologists, and it's slowly starting to weave together. And so I just want to kind of be this middle, middle walker of the shadow. So I am a true raven at heart. I am a friend in the shadow and a friend in the darkness, and I can definitely support you through most things. And if I can't, I am humble enough to admit it. So I hope this helped you kind of start shadow work and shadow integration. And if you have any questions, just ask, and I'll try to get better at my articulation of the shadow. But I definitely do better as a wisdom reflector as opposed to an intellectual person spewing, you know, garbage I am. So thank you so much for tuning into this video and I'll see everybody next video. Mm -hmm.